Hi, thanks for joining us at Post Process here at Formnext Connect. In today's presentation, we're gonna talk about how you can maximize your current printer investment through optimizing your digital workflow. My name is Dean Von Bank, and I lead the strategic partnership group here at Post Process. And today we wanna to talk about additive workflow, and as a lot of people refer to it, the dirty little secret of post printing or post processing. We're then gonna lead into how we can drive cost and efficiency improvements for your operation and spend a little bit of time talking about the future. We spend a lot of time talking about the future. Today, we really wanna spend time talking about how we're optimizing today's investments, but give a view for what we think it could look like in the future. So if we start with today's additive workflow, and as we refer to it, today's dirty little secret, First, I'd like to give you a view, if you're looking from the outside, of what it might look like. If you open the door, this is what the back room of some of our customers look like and what we, what we see when people are doing the post-processing uh, or post-printing for solutions once they come off the printer. And what we're trying to do is how do we change that overall workflow so that we don't have rooms like this uh, in the back that people are closing the doors uh, and don't want people to see. So the way that the industry thinks about it today is that we have both design, build, and post print. Unfortunately though, that post printing step is after an af often an afterthought. And people are designing things that they then have to deal with in that post print step. Why, why should I care though, you might be asking? Well, it's because there's an opportunity for a big improvement. So today, service providers, uh, referencing the Wohler's report, say that anywhere from 20 to 30% of their total costs of their production of end use parts comes through post printing. So that's why people really care about how am I optimizing the post print piece of this overall workflow. At post process, we do our own annual uh, post printing survey and the survey in 2020 had some very interesting uh, outcomes. The first was, Many people, they don't even measure their overall post print spending. Nearly 20% of the respondents in our survey don't measure the post print spending. That being said, post printing is becoming very complex. The, the amount of technologies that people are using, the types of parts that they're printing, the unique geometries that they're printing, all of these things are causing post printing to become much more comp complex. That complexity is leading to the use of additional skilled labor. One of the challenges that we've seen with the pandemic and just the labor market overall is that finding that skilled labor in order to do that post printing is very difficult. Not only is it costly, but in some cases you can't even find those resources. Uh, for those people that are looking to move into production, what they told us is that the highest post printed expenditures and the most labor challenges come from that group. As I wanna move into production, that's when I really experience the pain of looking for um, labor and, and the highest costs. And many people believe that what they're doing today are acceptable for the future as they move into production. So what I'm doing for prototyping, what I'm doing in my post print operations today, only 25% of people told us that that is acceptable for what I'm doing in the future. So there's definitely an opportunity to optimize this overall workflow. And that's what we wanna spend some time talking about today. So what does it cost? In our survey, we also asked people what it costs. You can see on the chart on the left-hand side here, people range from zero up to over 50%, but the vast majority of people are in that, again, 20 to 30% range uh, of the amount of post print to the overall cost of their parts. Again, 20% of people don't even know what, it's cost, what it costs them, but of the people that do, the two technologies that have the highest post print costs, costs are the resin vat photopolymerization technology, as well as powder bed fusion. Not surprisingly for those of you that are very uh, knowledgeable about these technologies, but they definitely have the highest expenditure because of the highest labor that is used for either cleaning, curing, removing powder, all of those uh, post print processes with regard to those two technologies. When we asked in the survey uh, what people found were the, the biggest 
problems, the biggest challenges that they had in post printing. The first was the length of time to finish parts. So again, not surprisingly, because it's very labor intensive, because it's often a one-to-one -one and not a batch operation, that length of time uh, was one of their biggest concerns. Secondly was uh, the consistency. So if you have Sally and Fred and Sandra and Johnny all doing different parts, you're going to get a little less consistency. Uh, we talked about the skill labor and then the fact that there's throughput uh, limitations. So this isn't really a presentation on our uh, post printing trends survey. You can, however, download the full report at postprocess.com forward slash trends dash 2020. And I think you'll find that it has a lot more interesting information than the few snippets that I'm covering in the presentation today. So how does this all, how does all this information then uh, come to play when we talk about the overall workflow? Well, the problem is that today's workflow really create a scale up problem. With the amount of manual labor and the traditional manufacturing systems that are being in use, things like picks and sanding, uh, manual sprayers, uh, subtractive tumblers. When you look at the pictures on this slide, I'm sure that many of you see this is what it looks like uh, when I think about my post printing operation. Well, the problem with those, uh, those approaches to post printing is that they cannot scale for maximizing, again, your th current 3D printing investment. They're too time consuming. They provide inconsistent results, as I referred to on the previous slide, high breakage rates, and then they are just too expensive. So whether you're spending 20% of your costs on post printing or you're spending 50% of your costs on post printing, uh, the way that you can get to optimizing that workflow is by identifying areas to remove labor, become more efficient, create an automated intelligent solution. And let's talk a little bit about that. So what are the things, if we really wanna understand how we're maximizing that workflow, we need to understand our costs and how we can drive costs or efficiencies out of our current processes. So let's talk a little bit about the costs of post printing. So some of the costs are easy. People talk about equipment and materials and labor. Those things are, are pretty easy to assign specifically to our post printing process and be able to identify those costs. There are some ad additional things like waste uh, that people are now becoming more cognizant of how uh, waste is a cost that I have to actually allocate. Now, one of the keys to understanding these costs is to really get to the, those people that are the most intimate with the process and have the best understanding. Often those are the operators or the people that are actually doing the post printing. I might say, oh, it's only taking somebody two minutes per part. When you actually go and talk to the operator, they might say, look, I have to spend 10 or 15 or 20 minutes per part because of the intricate design that we're currently printing. Then you have this overall process, once you've got some of that information, that you take a look at what your current post print cost is, and then you can compare it to, to solutions like offered by post process technologies and create your ROI. So when we are thinking about calculating these costs, there are some areas where we, where we think that the costs are overlooked often from a post printing standpoint. And I just wanna call out five areas that you might wanna think about when you're thinking about uh, your post-print workflow. The first is health, hs and &E, health, safety, and environmental impacts. This is something that we are hearing continuously from our customers. It's being elevated in terms of the discussion of what we wanna have in a consideration of a solution. Second is reprinting. Uh, oftentimes people end up uh, throwing away or have broken parts or uh, just can't get to the level that they want of finish or uh, end use part, and they have to they have to reprint because they weren't thinking about that overall chain and how I get to an end use part. Something that depending on where you're located that you might think about often is number three on this list, which is floor space or storage and material handling. Uh, we have some customers that really have a very small space. They're in an area where uh, cost of storage or cost of floor space is very expensive and they think about that in terms of their ROI. Uh, resources to train multiple processes. So again, the more commonality that you can have uh, in your situation on post printing, the more that you can make it easy for a new operator to step in, those are costs that you also have to, to allocate uh, into your post print operation. And then clearly there's this opportunity cost of manual labor. If you can free up 
Uh, and we'll talk about some situations where we freed up tens of hours a week, 20 hours, 40 hours a week uh, of an operator's time. What could that person be doing? That's how we factor in this opportunity cost. And these are, one of the reasons that we call these out on the slide, it's, these might not be the hard dollar aspects that you're thinking about in your ROI, but these are definite considerations when you're thinking about how am I maximizing my overall investment, my overall spend. If we turn back to our survey about the, the two areas for uh, material jetting and VAT photopolymerization that we talk about, those are areas where people have challenges with regard to the post printing. I'm gonna use these two because we're gonna use an example, uh, an ROI example, a case study example with a couple of our partners. So the first in material jetting, one of the, the number one challenge that customers in our survey told us is that it's the length of time to finish parts. So it just takes too long. And for those of you that are familiar with material jetting, it typically involves a manual spray process part by part. Uh, so it's very labor intensive and you're managing it one part at a time. On, on the VAT photopolymer side or the resin side, the number one challenge is that they're using skilled labor to do things like excess resin removal, to move parts from one vat into another vat, uh, typically where you're talking about maybe a dirty IPA, clean IPA, I'm moving something uh, between all of these uh, different processes. So you can see the challenges are a little bit different uh, in each one of these cases. So to drive the point home, I really wanna talk about a couple case studies uh, that we've done with partners, one in material jetting and one in the resin space, and the advantages that they saw in post-processes automated intelligent uh, solutions uh, for their workflow. So the first case study is with somebody that you all know, Protolabs. And in Protolabs case, they were processing uh, polyjet parts. And so in a typical day, they would process almost 100, about 90 polyjet parts, and that would take them about eight hours of manual labor plus four hours of soaking the parts. So in one given week, that's about 40 hours of labor uh, that required to finish those parts because again, they were doing it one by one and a lot of manual labor. And you can see that, on, that captured on the left-hand side. With the automated solution from post-process, they could, process those 90 parts per day uh, in, with, in removing a lot of those manual labor. So they removed 20 hours of manual labor, reducing their labor time by 50%. And so when you think about your operation, if you could have uh, another operator, another one of your resources available for an additional 20 hours, just think of what you could do in your operation to improve your efficiency. The second case study is split vision. And so this again is a resin removal solution. And today they're using uh, figure four DLP printers. And they found that not only was IPA messy and unpleasant for the work environment, but they also spent quite a bit of time manually brushing, getting to fine details and required rewashing. So instead of doing that kind of as, a, as dunking an IPA and then spending time on each part washing them, what they found with the post-process solution is that they could batch process 60 parts at one time to eliminate all of those excess processes. So the benefit to them was they improved from 30 minutes per part down to 10 parts in less than five minutes. So uh, the quote that I like to say is that after they've tried our solution at post-process, it's hard that they can imagine ever going back uh, to using IPA again. And these are, uh, we've seen this from a lot of customers, especially as you factor in some of the other considerations of talking about safety, health safety, waste, et cetera. Okay, so after we've now spent some time talking about how we're optimizing the digital thread in today's environment, let's talk a little bit about the future and where the future of the additive uh, market is going with regard to the digital thread. We like to talk about these three areas that I introduced earlier, part design, part print, and part post print. And today, the digital thread is really highly tied together in design and print. So the digital file moves very well across design and print, but there is this break between the print and the post print. And so that break in that digital thread limits the four things that are listed here at the bottom, scalability, traceability, the ability to create digital inventories, and then sustainability. So what we're doing here at Post Process is we want to close that 
close that loop, create that end-to-end -end automation. Think about how I am designing and printing parts and accounting for post-printing of those parts. So again, as an example, rather than thinking about what's my most cost-effective design, my only my cost-effective print, I wanna think about what is my most cost-effective route to producing an end-use part. That might mean that I design or print or post-print a little bit differently, but I wanna look at that overall end-to-end -end process, that overall workflow, as we've been talking about, and optimizing that overall workflow. At post-process, we talk about the fact that our data-driven post-printing is going to enable that connection of the digital thread through our automated software-controlled uh, solutions. And there we're trying to, we talk about digitizing the tribal knowledge. So I talked earlier about the individuals, Sally and Fred and Sandra, that are doing the, the actual post-processing, post-printing. We want to digitize that create software and run algorithms that can then have that produced over and over and over again. Because of that, we can add intelligence where we can use predictive models, machine learning as people are designing new geometries with new materials, new technologies come out, and it's really comprehensive. So we're connecting not only to that overall printer, but now as people are introducing MES and manufacturing systems, we can also connect the entire additive workflow uh, from our from our intelligent solution. So that's the end of our presentation today. I hope that you found it uh, interesting and useful and learned a little bit more about how to optimize your existing workflow and maybe what some of the future might look like. We appreciate your attendance. And if you'd like to learn more about automated post printing today, the benefits can bring you today and some of the benefits that bring us in the future, please contact us with any questions. You can reach out directly to me or you could just reach out to us on our post process website. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your Formnext Connect day.